Man, if only the front end on this thing was bigger. I'm telling you, I need some, I need some space up there. I need a billboard up there in the front of my truck so that everybody knows I'm a coming. Well, we may have just the truck for you if you're into that. Hang on. So I was, uh, I was talking to my friend Dewey, and I says to him, I says, uh, you know, Dewey, your truck is a piece of crap. Uh, you, you ought to consider getting a new one. And I says to him, I says, you know, so uh, if you were to do such a thing, get yourself a new pickup truck, what would you get? What would you like to have? And Dewey looks at me, and he goes, well, I think... Uh, the ultimate truck would be the ultimate. That's that's what I want. So here it is. <laughs> it is a uh, GMC uh, Sierra Denali 1500, which I think is, there's a 1500 in there somewhere, but it is a Yukon Denali. And this particular level of the Denali, which is already kind of an exclusive thing in and of itself, is the ultimate model. Now what do we have? Well, this particular uh, example is a, uh, a crew cab, of course, because that's everyone's driving around in crew cabs, so that's what it is. Uh, it's got your short box on it, so that makes it a little bit more maneuverable. When I, see, check the proportions out. It looks like it came off of somebody's design pen because it looks like pretty equidistant cabs in the middle and the hood and the bed are almost the same length kind of thing. Um, and the, another interesting thing about this, look at how deep everything is. The front fenders are really deep and the, uh, the rear deck, deck. <laughs> the rear bed is also quite deep, which I'll show you in just a minute. But the, this thing is also powered by a massive, massive 6.2 liter V8 engine. And uh, it is primarily a luxury vehicle in pickup truck form. And it's got all kinds of widgets and watchets and all kinds of things on it. that uh, I'll try to show you most of them, but if I showed you everything, we'd be here all day. And I know you got things to do. But it's a, it's a big truck. It, it's one of these things about the, the visual design of modern pickups makes them look as big as they can possibly make it look. Like that front end I showed you. I mean, it, it just, it's kind of like the front end on the new Tundra. It's just huge. I can't think how it possibly helps aerodynamics, but then again, they build them and design them and engineer them and I just talk about them occasionally. But as you can see, it looks huge. And when you get into it, it feels huge. But it's really not that much bigger than most pickup trucks have been. Especially in the half, half ton range, which is what this is. And uh, it, what, do you, what, what can you say? That's what Americans apparently want right now. They want big, massive, brawny, muscular. It, nothing, 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 phew, nothing is more fun than reading through some of the uh, PR material on these vehicles as they describe the styling. And you see all these terms like muscular, aggressive. You know, they're trying to put an image across that you're a tough guy or you're a tough girl, you're like Thor, or you're like Xena, you know, whatever. 
Uh, but what happens when you drive it? Is, does it? Does it do anything magical? Is it better than pickups have been, especially in an extremely expensive trim line like this one? This is an $80,000 truck, ladies and gentlemen. Does it drive and handle and ride like an $80,000 truck? Well, I'll give you my best uh, impression, if only I could talk, uh, of what I think it does, but only you can be the final arbiter of whether or not this thing is worth $80,000. Or if you just, you know, you may have $80,000 in, in your cookie jar that you just want to buy something to drive around in, so. But you can tow with it. It does have a nice, healthy tow capacity. Can you see that? Hell, no, probably not. I could barely see it. But uh, we have agreement in one area. We have agreement that says that the maximum trailer capacity, as far as the weight of the trailer that you're pulling, a conventional trailer, is 8,900 pounds. They agree in that. But, however, on one statistic I saw in the spec sheet, it said the payload was 2,010 pounds, but it says here the maximum payload is 1,479 pounds. So, that's one you believe. The, the one you have to believe is the one that's on the side of the truck because it includes things that the other spec sheet does not. People are not going to weigh the truck every time they put stuff in it to find out whether or not they're, in fact, uh, doing exactly what they should be doing in terms of payload. They're going to throw a bunch of stuff in there and haul it wherever they're going and, and hope it's right. I mean, they're not going to do something stupid, right? Like take something they know weighs 2,500 pounds and throw it in the back of this truck. Help, police, murder, big shot of here. Although I think it would probably be fine if you did, especially if you're just going for short distances. But uh, anyway, enough of this uh, babble. I'm just, I'm, I'm just overwhelmed by the ultimateness of it all. And I think we should start, as we always do with these vehicles, with the engine compartment to see what she's got under the hood. My God, how do you photograph such a massive thing? It's not easy. Um, one thing, I, I showed you the front end of this truck and, and I was talking about how deep and high everything is. Well, the engine's buried underneath here somewhere and uh, to get on top of it, to work on it, if you need to do so, is not going to be the world's easiest thing. Uh, it's fascinating, though, because it's got, uh, it's got all this interesting intake stuff on there. See those? Uh, it's kind of like something from the movie Alien, you know? It's wrapped around the back of it, like before when the, when the xenomorph uh, wraps around your neck and then th shoves that tube down your throat and then later kills you. It kind of looks like that. But this is a 6.2 liter uh, V8 engine. It puts out a, a whopping, what is it, 420 horsepower. Mm-hmm. Which a lot of you will enjoy because you like horsepower. And look at, look at this here, look at this here. It's got struts here to like hold the front of the truck together, I, I get. I don't know what those are for. But they are, they're all part of all, holding all this stuff together because it does have a massive radiator array, as you would expect, uh, with something that puts out this kind of power. Uh, what's the torque? Did I say the torque? 460 pounds of feet in the torque department. And uh, the RPMs come way up high at 5,600. Uh, excuse me, the horsepower peak is 5,600 RPM, and the torque peak is 4,100 RPM which is kind of weird for a truck, in my opinion. I'm, it's got so much power that you're not gonna notice it. But uh, that's one of the things about these nice turbocharged engines from the likes of uh, Ford and Toyota in that they make their torque much, much lower than that. Or at least a Toyota does, I know. Uh, and that's so much better for towing and, and many other applications. Uh, but you know, it's you drive it, it's fast. <laughs> and it seems quite strong. It has a 10-speed automatic transmission, uh, which has all the all the normal goodies. You have your tow haul mode and 
and all this kind of stuff. And I'll check, I'm not sure right off the bat. I know that they make a ultimate towing package and I'll get into this more detail later. But this particular vehicle does not have the ultimate towing package. But equipped as it is, you can tow an 8,900 pound trailer with it. That's, that's what they say. Uh, you see, you gotta go all the way over to the side here to grab the hood to shut the thing. It's, it's big. Did I say it's big? It, it wants to be bigger. It's, it's very large, but it's tried to be even bigger than it is. All right, the question is, can this truck in all its massiveness detect Tiny Man? Tiny Man driving a big old truck. I'm such a small little creature. I'm nearly out of luck. I'm in a giant house that has wheels and it's called Denali. And I'm hoping this truck and I will bond and it will be my pally. Boy, that's really bad, isn't it? Life is not easy for Tiny Man. Oh, yep. Oh, don't eat your Now, let's go around back here, have a look because the bed is very interesting because it's very deep. See the depth? Can you, can you sense this depth? I have so little control over my gimbal, so it's, it's, it's gone mad. It's, you know, we're having, we're having a lot of labor problems, basically, but I figure, I think I got this figured out here. First of all, this is what we do here. You see? Nicely dampened, right? And then we take this right here. And we open that like so. But what do we do then? What we do then is press this. Like so. And what do we got there? Well, we got uh, we got a step right here. And see, this is when you, learn, you use this thing. Like so. so. So like if you're doing, you sort of waddle up here like this. <coughs> oh. Boy, it's nice up here. Yes, indeed. Ain't it pretty? Yeah, that's uh, that's real nice. Well, <clears throat> anyway, then from there, we go down here, like so. Come down. Got all your friends around. And uh, here's here's your your kickers, your stereo system, and you hit this button right here on off, and boom. Actually, uh, there is not a boom unless you have it. Look, it appears, as near as I can tell, that you have to have this hooked up to either your uh, Bluetooth or your auxiliary or USB or something like that in the car. I don't think it ties directly into the billion dollar Bose sound system. <laughs> it's probably, probably some kind of a fight between kicker and Bose. But anyway, oh, and I do like this. Did I show you this before? I'm gonna show you this again. <laughs> Or maybe for the first time. Easy boy, easy, easy. I do love these graphics, but that's that's it. That's very you know clear as crystal on how to to use everything, right? Yeah, of course it is. Uh, hang on, excuse me, one minute. Yep. <coughs> All right. So then to put everything up, hang on. That goes like that, and then this folds up. Uh, yeah. Like that. I'm probably doing all this wrong, but you know, if I'm doing it wrong, I blame you, General Motors. <laughs> Look at that. Now, can you put this down now? If it's if it's up. When you did this, huh? Nope. Tailgate has. Let's do this. <laughs> No, you can't put that up unless the whole thing's down. So we got to do this, and we got to do that, and we got to do this, and that, and that, and huzzah! That is your multi-use pro tailgate. I think it speaks for itself, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy it. 
It's, uh, it's one of the latest and greatest tailgates ever made. But there's your conventional uh, system, whereas you can get in the back of the truck. And like I say, it's a, a composite plastic something or other material, but it looks quite stout, quite tough. And the, the bed, even though it's short, a short bed, it does seem to have a lot of depth to it, so you got a lot of room. And this is one of the greatest things GM has ever done. Right over here in the corner is a place to get in. To put your foot right on there, see? Look what I've done there, you see? Well, how about that? <gasps> What's happened here? The fairies have been here. What do we have? There's a Maroni. Oh, boy. And it's a big one. It's a big one. Look at here. Well, here we have our GMC Sierra 1500 Denali Ultimate. And uh, we have here a very expensive truck. Um, as you can see, now, now one thing has happened. This happened with a, uh, a recent, I believe it was the Encore GX I had from General Motors, but they actually had things on the Moroni that they had to take money off of. Why was that? Well, for example, on that vehicle it had heated seat buttons, but no heated seats. And this thing indicates, where is it? It says, uh, a credit not equipped with front and rear park assist. Includes later retrofit. So what does that tell you? Well, that sounds like your classic supply side issue that they didn't have the parts, but they built the truck anyway because they thought, well, it's just a minor thing. We can slap it on there later. And you, you see that on, uh, I haven't seen that on anybody else's vehicles. I'm, assure, I'm assuming that that happens, but it definitely happens with General Motors vehicles. They just go ahead and build the truck anyway because you don't really need that parking assist, do you? I mean, come on. But you do have the billion-dollar trailer software that'll that has some real good things in it and has some things in it that are, I think, just luxuries, actually. But then again, this is a luxury vehicle. So, what's our, what's our sticker here? $80,840 total. The standard vehicle price before option is $78,700. So, it, it's pretty loaded as is out of the box because this is the ultimate. Welcome to my underground lair. Um, what we have on the back of our Denali is leaf springs. Good old-fashioned leaf springs, as you can see. They attach to the fully boxed frame. And uh, it's much simpler than the new, well, not new with RAM. The, uh, the last vehicle I uh, reviewed, pickup-wise, since I started this brand new endeavor, uh, had coil springs, as it does the new Tundra, and a whole lot more hardware. This is very simple. There's no, there's not even a, a uh, sway bar or anything like that. You just have your, your live rear axle and your leaf springs, and off you go. Bob's your uncle. Oh, you got your bump stop. There it is, bump stop there. Um, and you also have, if you can see it, oh, of course you can, it's right there. <laughs> On the rear shock, uh, this has an adaptive suspension in that the damping of the shock can be changed electronically depending on what it's doing. As far as I know, I can, uh, in my first perusal of all this, I could not find any kind of adjustment for that. So I think it does it automatically. Oh, what's this say? A uh, whole bunch of numbers. God, I should use a code reader and see what that is. But right here, oops, sorry. Right here. That's your uh, your thing that is uh, regulating the damping inside that shock absorber. So it's all designed to give you a, a better, a smoother, more controlled ride. And does it? Uh, I can't tell the difference between this truck and every other full-size truck this year. I'm sorry. I, it, to me, they all ride like they do. They all ride like big pickups. They're jiggly. They're, I mean, they're in good control. 
and they feel rock solid. They all feel really, which I think they're aiming at more than anything else is that solid feel. But as far as uh, compliance and everything else, uh, I'm very unimpressed. When they're unloaded. Uh, when they're loaded, I'm sure they probably ride a little better. But uh, just like Consumer Reports said in describing the uh, ride quality of the Tundra, it's jiggly. Every truck I've driven this year has been tri jiggly. It's just the way they are. Uh, and uh, well, well, first of all, I want to point out something else that I've always wanted to point out about frames on these trucks is every year, it seems like, they come out and they box it, they do all kinds of other things, and they, they'll give you some numbers about it's 30% torsionally stiffer than the last year. And so, so basically, if you go back 10 years, uh, you're looking at frames that were basically made of macaroni, apparently because they're always making them stiffer and always advertising that it's a stiffer and stiffer frame. But the fact of the matter is, a frame needs to flex in the right places for ride quality, durability, and everything else, and also for uh, suspension travel if you do drive it off-road. Now this is an all-wheel drive vehicle slash four-wheel drive vehicle. It has an auto and uh, two high setting and auto, t auto setting and four high and four low but no skid plates to speak of. As you can see, there's your fuel tank right there. It has no skid plate. If you see the transfer case all the way up there, Del Norte, it has no, uh, any kind of protection on the bottom of it. It's nice and high off the ground, and it's, it's basically protected by the uh, cross members of the frame, but you could still knock the crap out of it on a rock easily. I'll, I'll show you how if you, if you don't. <laughs> If you don't believe me. Uh, something else that's weird. Can we go weird again? Same thing as on the uh, Ram 1500. A temporary spare tire on a full-size truck. This is new territory for me. Maybe they've been doing this for years and I just never noticed it. But I find it just absolutely weird that they don't have a full-size spare tire on a truck. Especially one with four-wheel drive because... There is the implication you might be taking this somewhere remote and you need a full size spare, uh, anyway. And look at all the heat shielding on this. Now if Dewey was here, Dewey's not here, but if Dewey was here, he'd look at that and go, that's just gonna rust and fall off. I mean, I give that, th I give that thing up here with the salt on the roads and the anti-melt stuff. I give it, uh, well I give that about 18 months before it falls off. Naturally, I'm sure it'll last longer than that, but man, that's a lot of protection on there. And it's really close to the uh, rear axle here, which is going to move up and down just a little bit. Being at the very center it's not of, of the axle, it's not going to move that much, but it will move some. And as you load the vehicle, the vehicle will lower down, so I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it! But here, there we are! Okay, let's get out from under here. Now they can, they can all they can all thank uh, Toyota for this right here. The fact that they put oh this has got all kinds of uh, f uh, fixtures on here that won't work on my one of my smaller trailers. I can tell you that right off the bat. But um, by putting this up here, it's real easy to get to when you're plugging your trailer in. Everything used to be down here. And I think it was Toyota that first put it up high like that. Maybe not. But Toyota was always the first, as I recall, to use a rear camera on a full-size truck. 2007. But I'm probably wrong about that, too. So, that's what's underneath the, the rear end. Let's take us a real quick gander on the front. Oh, by the way, these uh, running boards right here. See this? I'm holding out the camera. <laughs> these running boards are in the full deploy position. Usually they retract when you drive it or park it. And then there is a stow mode. Unlike RAM, we're still fighting about that if y'all followed that video. Look at that, aluminum. An aluminum upper control arm. I like that. That's nice. And how big are these wheels? Great good molly. Let's see, where's that tire size at? Looking for it, looking for it. Look at, there it is, 22 inch wheels. Whoa! But here we are, we do have a nice skid plate here, protecting the front end, this is good. 
So I guess what happens is you'll hit the rock with the front here and decide maybe you ought to back up before you go and take out the fuel tank. I don't know. Most of the fuel tank guards, incidentally, that I've seen these days are made out of a ballistic nylon or some kind of plastic to protect the fuel tank. And that, these things are important on pickups. I mean, if you actually use it and drive it, uh, you're going you're gonna to hit some stuff if you're not careful. But again, uh, the same basic suspension design, the double-A arm design that everybody uses now. We used to have, GM used to use the massive girder beam front suspension. Ford used to use the twin-eye beam. Uh, everybody had something different. And then long about the 80s, I think it was, it started, if I recall, with the compact trucks and work their way over to the uh, to the full-size trucks because you can basically use the exact same suspension on the front whether or not you have four-wheel drive or not. Uh, you can, uh, there's plenty of room in the standard suspension to put the drive shaft through there and have an independent front drive suspension when they used to just have straight axles like your uh, Jeep Wrangler still does. So, do we understand all that? Okay, good. Now here, here's something. This is a uh, source of controversy to the Toyota crew. Having these nice uh, recovery hooks. Chrome. So that when they get all muddy, you can, well, you have just as much trouble finding them as, well. What's really weird about this to me is how low this front end is. Can you tell that? This, this is how you improve your gas mileage on your 6.2 liter V8. Uh, but, uh, and I'm, I'm sure I haven't looked at the uh, approach and departure angles, but you get the impression that this truck is not really a hardcore off-roader as much as a all-weather beast designed to be towed, uh, designed to be towed. I'm sorry, GMC, I didn't mean it like that. This, <laughs> designed to tow your trailer in all kinds of weather, let's put it that way. Like that horse trailer over there. It's being towed by a different truck, not this one. But, so there you go. That's your suspension. That's your fully boxed frame that's really stiff. And that's your uh, deployed running boards. And boy, I'm, a, I'm, I'm just avoiding it, folks. I have to go inside and, and try to get through the dash on this. And this thing has a lot of tech on it. I mean, a lot. There's cameras everywhere. There's uh, trailer controls everywhere, and it's gonna be a big one. So you may want to get a beverage right now. I should put an intermission thing in here. So get you ready for that because that's where they put all the money and that's where they did all their things. The rest of the truck is uh, pretty conventional to be honest with you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know, a lot of people have been, there's been what I, what, what I would like to call scuttlebutt about the, uh, the new dashboard, the new interior of the uh, Sierra full-size pickup line. And they haven't factory designed everything. Uh, they, uh, as everybody else is doing, they're going the full digital, the full virtual, the whole new, uh, what, what I would describe as the new approach that everybody is, seems to be use, using. And I, I don't know how I feel about it so far. It, it's good and it's bad, but boy, it, it does add a lot of complexity. And of course, if this is your truck, if you own this vehicle, you'll be able to uh, dial in pretty much exactly what you want to have. But it'll take you a little while to get there because there's so many variations and there's so much uh, you have a lot of choices as to how you can uh, display different things we'll start here just real quick I'll give you kind of, I'm kind of giving you an overview I'm not going to go into super depth because we would be here in, until you know next year but what we have here is uh, our system of information is primarily run in the middle as far as where the trip computer is, but we also have uh, different approaches to what we can do with the entire instrument display for the driver. And if we go out to display layout, uh, we are currently sitting on classic, 
which makes it look like the uh, it's <laughs> it's analog forebearers, and it's very clear, uh, fairly easy to write, uh, to read, but boy, it has a lot of information, and you can adjust all this stuff. Uh, this is the basic display layout I'm talking about right now. We're on classic, which is also what they they tended to. Uh, a lot of times when they would make a, a major model shift with pickups, they would have some unsold versions of the older truck. Or the, the truck, you know, would, let's say it went from uh, the fifth generation to the sixth generation. So a lot of times if they had a bunch of fifth generation left over, they'd sell it as the classic version, right? Well, this is, uh, this is a bit more straightforward than that. This is just to most strongly resemble what you're used to when you get into a, a GMC Sierra. But, but what if I want something more progressive? Well, that's what we have here. And this is what they continue, uh, consider to be more progressive in terms of what you have. And if we stay on this, let's say we're going to sit on progressive as an example, as a basic format for your instruments. Then you go over here and on the left side, you pick here and you can decide what you want over there. Compass or time and temperature. or tire. You can have your tire pressure up there all the time if you want to. Uh, like you're just ver real worried about your tire pressure. And right now, as you can see, they're all in perfect alignment with each other at 37 PSI. Uh, fuel economy average, 13.8. That's uh, what I've been getting over the, over God, I can't see the somewhere among all this I can probably dial up the trip meter and tell you how many miles I've been on this tank but well for the moment we'll trust it at 13.8 which is nothing to, nothing to go home and celebrate but we are talking about a 6.2 liter engine with a lot of power so there's our transmission fluid temperature and then my favorite none you could just it's just kind of a you know there ain't nothing there so so that's what that particular format that is known as progressive now if we go back right side info time and temperature tire pressure in other words the same choices you have for the left side of your instrument cluster you can help it on the right side and that's all well and good same exact thing you saw before you starting to understand how this works uh, do you follow me? You follow me? Okay, so if we go back again, uh, oops, sorry, I went too far. Now go back to layout. Let's go to digital. And here's our digital display. And once again, uh, you have all these choices for digital. Or do you? Huh. The fact is, no, you don't. You have, uh, you would think, See, I go up and down here, and there is nothing here, but there's our digital, and there is no real change that I can put on each, on uh, left and right sides. But if I go back to progressive uh, and hit it, and then go this way and that way, uh, this display layout, I can go left side info, right side info. So, in the digital realm... Now we just go back. Left side info. All the same ones we saw before, remember? And we can go to the right side info if we want to do that. Oop, there we go. Now this is one of my favorite. Oh, don't you love this? Drive mode enhanced. Uh, compass time and temperature, tire pressure. Uh, this is one of my favorites because this is where you can uh, adjust, and you can do this with all of them. Uh, you, the lower gauges you can put down there what you want. Uh, maximum, minimum, and medium. So if we go to minimum, for example, we only have a fuel gauge, basically. So anyway, I could do this all, I could, I could do this all day. But I'm not going to because uh, it's just crazy. But this is what this is a great example of what the new digital uh, and virtual displays give you the, as far as options. Uh, and and you can play with it all you want. You can customize it to do exactly what you'd like it to do 
Give the information you want, get rid of the information you find superfluous, and, uh, and drive on your merry way. I, I'm going to see how quickly I can go back to where I want to be here. This is the thing that I find a bit vexing, is figuring out exactly what you want to do. There we go. Display layout, and go back to classic, which is my personal favorite. And then I have to go down to... Uh, yeah, in order to get all those lower gauges back, what do I have to do? Well, let's see. There we go, lower gauges, thank you. And we'll go back up to maximum. And there we are. So, that's that. Uh, now, you're, you're probably all completely asleep now and you've, you've burned out your computer watching all this stuff. But we've just begun. Now, as we move over, we naturally have our uh, our beautiful center stack with a very very wide screen type format for your uh, touch screen and it is beautiful uh, high definition absolutely terrific to look at uh, on the left side you got all your different uh, if we want to go here I want to go there and we uh, this is uh, some of the options we have when we're towing and by the way uh, this is in addition to, if I, we go way over to the left side to the drive, what I like to call the drive center, we have uh, automatic, four high, two high, and four low. So that's your basics, right? But down here, we have our modes. So we can go to uh, sport, normal, off-road, and that's it. So I go to normal there, then there's that. Then, then if you want, you can press this lower button here and go into uh, tow haul mode. And in tow haul mode, as you can see, is a little, little indicator right down here. And that does what your normal tow haul mode stuff does. So in addition to that, you, you also, uh, I don't know what happens. This, this has a towing package, but it doesn't have the ultimate towing package or the maximum towing package and you'd think it automatically being the ultimate would automatically have an ultimate tow package but it doesn't but the one that's on here is is pretty thorough so okay back over here now where do we go now well if we go back to our home screen that's where we can basically launch all kinds of mayhem there's our cameras oops sorry and look at all the cameras now this is again uh augmented reality here we have the reality of the the front of what's in front of the truck and the <laughs> augmentation of the of front hood but you will note it is the proper color of this vehicle now the thing i wonder if i if i painted this truck a different color if that would change no of course it wouldn't but that's how it came out of the factory there's our back uh camera and there's a wider version but wait a minute how did it do that well this is actually I said back this is actually the front as it's as it indicates and that's behind you and this here is behind the truck directly behind the truck looking overhead if you will and there's so, so you have overhead you have front back then you have these little guys it will show you the side the front side for what I call the front fenders and that's all that's great for not smashing your front fenders into anything squeezing into tight, uh, tight parking places at the mall that kind of stuff then we have this is one of my favorites this is an overhead view of it if you look right down in here that's where your hitch would be if you uh, put in your trailer hitch so when you're backing up you can you can so easily navigate where the uh, trailer ball is going to put it on your trailer that's it's just an, an advancement of an old system that's been around oh god since about 2006 2007 2008 right in there when all the manufacturers started using rear cameras and they used to have them up here oh incidentally while I'm up here uh, how do I activate this thing uh, there we go there we have the virtual, this is, uh, a lot of cars have this now. This eliminates what's behind you. Uh, it, it's no longer a mirror, it's actually a camera in the mirror thing <laughs> that eliminates all the stuff that's behind you. 
and that's what's actually behind me. Me is behind me. So, I mean, it's this. You could just go on for days with this thing. It's 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 all designed to basically give you options to customize every aspect of the truck as it interfaces with you so you can uh, you can have the exactly the truck you want depending on what your settings are it's pretty amazing and then down here we have your climate all your good climate. that's pretty straightforward most of this you've seen before this of course has heated seats and does it have cooled seats of course it does or what I like to call ventilated seats and down here you have another series of buttons that will give you access for everything like your lane discipline, keeping a vehicle in the lane, your parking indicators, and this, it's very interesting to note, as I have before, it doesn't actually have parking indicate, parking warning and parking assist. It wasn't installed. And they deducted $50 off it, and it says on the Monroney that you can come get it installed one day free of charge. I guess they're just waiting on parts weird that they only have this is the automatic uh, you can drop the tailgate from here just press that button uh, and you know your trash control off your hill descent locking your windows all that stuff now even weirder <laughs> it, it, I, it's weirder in that it this here's an actual physical thing that used to be mechanical in the truck has now been electronic electronically enhanced let's put it that way but this is your shifter and to go into drive, you put it right there. If you hit it again, you'll go into lower L, which gives you the ability to uh, to shift manually up to 10 different speeds. It's a 10-speed transmission. And then if you go back up like that, neutral, drive, and you push your button in, reverse. There's access to all your cameras again. And then to go into park, you just press this button as you can see is that better than what used to be just a mechanical thing I don't know you tell me uh, below that is your uh, trailer brake controller which is perfectly easy to access for you and your dog so your dog could put the tra you know you, you, you it's like those old uh, airliners when you had a flight engineer who would actually regulate the throttles as you're flying the airplane to make sure everything was absolutely perfect especially a multi-engine like you have four engines your flight engineer would, would roll in back here and well that's what your dog can do to because i have no earthly idea why they put it down here i don't i'm that's their decision probably because there was no room to put it anywhere else uh what else what else here's this what does that do i have no idea but i feel like i'm being watched i'll put it that way uh, you have lots of uh, storage on this thing. Look there, there's a top. And then there's <coughs> your conventional, you see? Very nice. Now then, I'm going to have to move my coffee for this next one. See, we're still in the car, guys. This, I could do the whole video just on this thing. Mm. Oh, that's good coffee. I'm going to balance you right there. And here we have our center console. And if you uh, push this up, there's your mask, which you should still be wearing, even though you don't think we have a pandemic anymore. Take this out, and you have a pretty deep uh, well right there, which you can fit all kinds of things. Can you fit a laptop in there? Depends on the laptop, but yeah, sure. No problem. Oop, sorry. Right here, wireless charging for your cell device, your smartphone, your dumb phone. Well, actually, if you have a dumb phone, I don't think you can do that. I don't think you can. Anyway. So, is there anything else I absolutely need you to know? Um, the trailer system. Ah, yes. I'm, which reminds me, I can tell by the little indicator that I've left the, the trailer uh, mode on. There she goes. Okay. Um, depending on the trailering package you have, there's all kinds of crazy stuff that can goes on. That goes on, but I... We do have uh, a very, very sophisticated type of uh, cruise control called Super Cruise, but it's unavailable on this truck most of the time where I drive it because it involves all kinds of different mapping and things like that. But the important thing about the adaptive cruise control and your blind spot warning and stuff, when you have a trailer attached, it can actually 
take that into account once you put all the information about your trailer in it. And that probably one of the most useful uh, new features of these uh, new tow packages with the manufacturers is the fact that your blind spot warning can be extended along the side of your trailer to where your, the rear of your trailer stops. So if you're going to change lanes, it'll tell you if there's something that not only is next to the truck, but is next to the trailer. And that is a wonderful, wonderful thing if you've ever towed a trailer, because that's, that's important stuff for you to know. All right, so uh, now that we're all a year older, uh, I'm sorry this took so long for this particular part of the video, but this is this is a big deal uh, with General Motors. You know, they uh, they they've there's been all kinds of like I said, uh, buttle scut, no no scuttlebutt about what we have in terms of a completely redesigned interior. Uh, as far as the aesthetics, you know, you can judge it for yourself, but it's very neat despite all the clutter of all the billions of bits of information you have it's it doesn't feel that cluttered uh, oh yeah and you <laughs> you do have you do have your uh, guess what yeah that's right you have a heads-up display if that's what you're into or you can just make it fade away so of course it has that this is the ultimate so that's part of what your $80,000 gets you on this truck. And I probably have left out a third of all this, all the things it can do. But I think those are the, what we'd like to, to describe as the key points in this, uh, in this half ton pickup truck. And uh, I have to go have a nap now because of all that. But there you go. That's your new Denali. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's have a look in this canar canaveras rear-ish area. As you see, our uh, running boards deploy by themselves when set. And there's this little thing here. See this here? Right here? This can actually, uh, you, if, when you get in the menu, you can pivot it back so that it makes it a little easier. Put your foot up here and get in there. Hey, nice, huh? I like that. So, here we have our rear seat area of our Denali Ultimate. And, and it's, it's, it's pretty great actually uh, but I would say is this the king of the room well I don't know to tell you the truth I have to remove something here okay yeah there's all these undergarments everywhere from uh, well never mind um, but here we have a split like a I would say 60 it's not 60 40 I think it's 70 30 Maybe even 80 20, I don't know. But you have the option of, of lifting these up, and you have a little bit of storage underneath there, but not a lot, really. Uh, but the floor is pretty much completely flat, and you have oodles of leg room. Uh, you have a very nice map light up there, and you have this uh, microfiber. If this is an op well, it's actually it's part of the uh, Ultimate package. You're seeing this all over the place, this microfiber headliner that's just beautiful to behold. And they it's just become the thing. I don't know why exactly. People just uh, have gone crazy. Manufacturers have gone nuts putting it in all their really upscale stuff because it's expensive, apparently. I think you can probably wash your, uh, clean your, your, your lenses on your cameras up here and your eyeglass. Look, look at this. See, I can run. I can wear up. It's, it's, it's what that's. That's, that's me and microfiber. But <clears throat> directly in front of us, we have heated seats. We have both the USB and USB-C interface for your portable electronic devices. And the uh, kind of in the front, I didn't mention this, but you have a nice low belt line so that you can see out of the truck really nicely. I like that because they, you know, they want you to drive this to Denali Park and drive around in it. Uh, and you, if you do that, then you got this beautiful window right here so you can see everything. I'm, I'm all for it. And now, my favorite thing in the back seat of any car. Let's see, how's this one? Hmm. I'd say it's about the right height. It's very, very good. Excellent armrest. This this super fancy leather that is so uh, 
incredibly both it feels durable but it's really sub subtle subtle so what is the word i always get hung up on that it's like i can almost never remember charlie's theron's name but, wow i just did but anyway it's it's extremely comfortable leather and you have a nice big door entry. You know, this does not seem to be the biggest of the, of the half-ton cabs to me, but I could be wrong. It's real hard to say. Now, here's something. Here's fun. Look at there. And you have a little storage thing here, I guess. I'm not real sure about what that is. Um, I don't think you could even get a cat back there. But there's one on each side. Uh, I'll see if I'll, I'll, I'll consult something and see if I can't find out what the heck that is. But <clears throat> roomy, 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 the crew cab. Mega room. Something for all your passengers. And let's do this again. I do like this. But I also like to be able to put it up and leave it up depending on the terrain I'm on and you can absolutely do this. Oh and here's another thing. Talk about stylistically. Look at the stitching on here is all looks like a looks like suture actually. And then we have this really cool Bose speaker right there. I love the look of that. Anyway. Well, so there you go folks. Enjoy. So here in our uh, Sierra Denali, we have uh, adaptive suspension system workings that are uh, attached. Basically what it is is you have sensors that are measuring the deflection, well not deflection, but let's just say the motion of the front and rear tires. And this, all this information goes into a computer system that goes into the ECU, the electronic control unit for the truck, and then uh, on each shock absorber we have these potentiometers that not only are measuring what the shock absorbers are doing, but they can change the value of the dampening via changing the valving. Uh, with, with, it's all purely mechanical, but the actual measuring is all electronic and it supposedly happens in microseconds to adjust the various uh, responses to each wheel to the pavement that you're on uh, to ensure a, a smooth and uh, a better ride than if it wasn't there. <laughs> Does that make sense? Do you understand? All, this, all these wires and these dampeners and these potentiometers and these sensors, that's what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, so here on the, the, one of the trails I drive on all the time here, uh, with all the test vehicles, what is my impression of the ride quality? Well, uh, it pretty much rides like every other pickup I've tested in 2022. Now let's look at this road here. This road here has sections of crap little little cracks in it and things it's just not a real good road but most cars i drive on this road and pickups have distinctly different personalities as a species the cars usually glide over that and you barely feel it if it, if you do feel it at all the trucks you can feel it and they're usually not bad this truck again and the braking is the same everything's the same in these pickups now. If you're gonna go, go buy a new truck, I think one of the biggest considerations you need to have is, is you need to throw that into, you should buy first of all the truck that you just like driving the most. It just feels right to you. You can see out of it. You can see out of this truck pretty good by the way. Kudos to GMC for that because it has 99 cameras around which are, are great for your trailer and everything. Why is it, it keeps going back to the trailer on this. I'm not towing a trailer. I'm not about to tow a trailer with it. It keeps going back and telling me about, well, anyway. But they're so similar nowadays that, that, that A, you should pick the truck that you feel most comfortable and safest driving. 
And I would actually throw in things like, does that particular vehicle, do you have a dealer that's convenient to you? When you're in automatic four-wheel drive mode here in our Dean Alley, uh, it's allowing the front and rear uh, axles to turn at different speeds without any kind of binding that you get. In other words, they're not all locked together. But if the rear wheels start to slip, then something electronic happens that locks up a differential, uh, I mean locks up a uh, where your drive line goes to the front wheels so that they will actually engage and, and go. It's like a, uh, in a lot of four-wheel drive systems, I'd say probably most, that are automatic or that you are electronically uh, set when you set it to four-wheel drive in the cab or in the uh, passenger compartment if it's an S SUV. It's, it's powered by a, a, a system of sleeves that slide back and forth to lock that front axle into the drivetrain and it does that via vacuum. And it's literally a little hose with uh, air goes through it and slides the, uh, the collar across when you put it into four wheel drive. So boom, you're in four wheel drive. That's how most of them work. Um, and I really, <laughs> I've known, like my neighbor across the street with his, he has an older uh, Ram pickup. It may even be a Dodge Ram, I'm not sure. It's many years old. But he's lost his, when he's been out plowing, he's lost his front axle drive system a couple of times. It just turned out to be that vacuum system uh, quits for whatever reason. And it's very, very easy to, he told me how the, uh, the local garage, this happened this winter, and he told me how the local garage fixed it. It was very ingenious, and they, they encountered it many times before, so they had a, a quick fix for it. And uh, I think they just kept a, a bunch of different air hoses on, on hand, little tubes for the air to go through, and that was the main thing that brought Anyway, that's what we're doing right now, though. We're in our automatic mode that right now the front wheels are not doing anything but rolling along, but they will react fairly quickly if they have to. Now, Super Cruise, you have not seen me demonstrate any of the wonders of Super Cruise, mainly because where I've been driving, it's not available. It, it, does, it has to have so much information to be able to do its Super Cruise thing. So, uh, but there is a, this, this bar here has color-coded lights to tell you all kinds of things. And I'm going to start the car and I'm going to give you a little light show. So hang on. Here we go. Have a look there. Ooh, look at that. It's telling you all kinds of different things. Like if it was, uh, green up here, it basically tells you the system is armed and ready and everything looks okay to, to use Super Cruise because Super Cruise, uh, can do all kinds of things like if you're in it's like imagine adaptive cruise control which keeps you a set distance from the car in front of you kicked up a big notch to where it can also pass vehicles that are going slow uh, it can look around in the lane next to you and uh, anyway it's it's very sophisticated and um, anyway that everything has to be just perfect for that well, as we enjoy this lovely B-roll footage from General Motors, I want to thank you for spending this time with me this hour. Dewey's asleep and I ain't got no one else to talk to. We'll say goodbye to the GMC Sierra Ultimate right now as it bounces along this, uh, this lovely scene somewhere in, I don't know, Southern California, something like that. You, you be careful out there. You drive safely and be sure to get the car or vehicle that's right for you. Ciao.